What's up my dudes? And welcome back to PLB Green. Today, I'm going to be building a root over hand bonsai. Let me explain to you exactly what I mean. This is my little sketchbook of ideas. And recently I came up with this random idea that I wanted to grow a bonsai over a kind of hand sculpture. This is my SketchUp. It's a little ficus, a little tiger bark ficus. This is the pot I have in mind. So imagine this most epic hand coming out of the pot, maybe something like that, like claw hand. And then a ficus, this ficus in particular, which has is quite angular and already kind of growing on a rock. Um, but I don't, I don't like this composition. And then the ficus just like growing out of the hand and all these aerial roots growing down to the soil. I uh, got myself a hand casting kit online. Um, so I'm going to use everything in this kit except for the plaster, the plaster of Paris, because instead of the plaster of Paris, which wouldn't last very long um, with a bonsai growing up on it, getting watered every day, um, I'm going to use some coloured grout, some slate grey coloured grout. So experimental, most epic construction. Let's get into it. After cracking open the bucket, I realised there were a lot of instructions, but I just got straight into it. I mixed up the white powdered substance, which turned pink, surprisingly. And after sticking my hand into it, I quickly realized that it was gonna take a long time for it to cure. After ages and ages and ages and ages of waiting, I managed to wriggle around and pull my hand out without any damage. Mixing the grout was a similar procedure, just to add water. But I quickly realized that I needed to add twice as much as the packaging said, just because the solution wasn't as fluid as it could have been. After mixing it very thoroughly, I tipped it into the hand mold and every few seconds or so, I would smack the side of the bucket and just made sure that any air bubbles that were going to be in the grout were rising to the surface. Even though the instructions said to only leave this in here for a few hours, I left it in for five days. Nothing could go wrong. The reason I did it was because this seemed really, seemed to take a long time to dry. Um, it, I've chipped away at the um, gelatin or whatever it is, just over the days, just to see if it was still pliable and then I could still peel it off because I noticed a lot of water coming out the bottom and that's why I took it out of here as well. This just seems to continuously leak water. This may not work. Let's get into it. I'm going to be as gentle as I can possibly be. I don't even know where to start. I guess I'll keep going around here. So you just kind of peel it off. I didn't want to leave it any longer. Oh, man, that's the skin texture. Check that out. Okay. So, it's worked to some degree. The hand is being slowly revealed. Check it. Positions looking super cool. Sick, I think. It's a nice angle of the hand. Check out the thumb. It's cool. Pink, one of the fingers, the tip of it got an air pocket. 
Does that mean all the fingers are going to do that? Those two did though. The pinky, these two fingers have cut, it's cut the tip off because they're at too sharp a right angle, but I might be able to cover that with the tree that I'm planning to plant on it. All right, this is it so far. Pretty cool. There's still some of this weird gelatin mold on it, but I think I'm gonna leave it for a couple more days exposed to the air now that it's, I don't know, 80% out. And then I'll come back and remove this last little bit. Here's the final product of the hand. It's um, just drying. I've put a coating of grout sealer on it um, just to make sure it doesn't make it waterproof because I actually want it to be porous enough to hold water like a normal rock. I think that's a chemical reaction that actually um, continues hardening the grout and uh, making it really resilient. So it's sort of got a slight gloss to it. Um, and other than that though, the, the grout has dried all the way through and it's rock solid. It's like a rock hand, literally. And I was really pleased with the final product in terms of the grout keeping all of the creases of the skin and finer details. So that's really cool. I'm using a coloured silicon midnight kind of grey here and I'm going to be gluing down a little plinth for the hand to sit up on. First step is to wipe down the surface with some sort of isopropic alcohol and I'm adding a very substantial amount of this silicon. I'm being very liberal with it because I really want this little stack of tile shards that I'm going to be putting the hand up on to be firmly secured. I'm stacking this little platform two tiles thick and I'm really making sure that I don't cover the drainage holes at the bottom of the pot because I still want the pot to thoroughly drain when I water it daily. Two tiles seems to be the perfect amount to put the hand up on without the tiles being shown above the soil line. I'm scraping up the glue that came out of the gun while I was gluing the tiles down. Waste not, want not. And I'm putting the hand into its final position. This took me a while, this final position. I wanted to get it just right. And I was trying to work with position and thirds and I really wanted the angle of the fingers to be right from the front of the pot as well. After much, much, much moving around, shifting ever so slightly and holding the hand up with a small lid, I was finally satisfied with the finished product. This is going to take 24 hours to cure, but from the front, it has a lot of potential. It's 24 hours later and the hand is ready. I can hold it upside down. Oh, it's not camera magic, people. The silicon has dried. Um, in review of the angle that I picked in the end, I quite like it. I think it's going to work well, but it's going to be a um, interesting matchup with this tiger bark ficus I have here. And smell good. This is the tiger bark ficus that I've chosen. It's got yellow leaves or lime colored leaves. It shouldn't. Uh, I don't know why they're so light. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. It's not in the best condition, this ficus, but um, that's okay. I will uh, should be able to put it in the greenhouse once it's uh, transplanted onto the hand and um, bring it back to full health. I'm actually not going to be doing much work to it today at all. Um, just a, a chop here and there. Uh, the first step is to get rid of this wire. Let's mold it into a bonsai hand. <laughs> I'm just going to take the rock out. Best part about bonsais, making a mess. Oh yeah. So I didn't bother even bringing my root rake because 
I don't think there's going to be many roots on this tree. It's not even connected to the to the to the rock. This is Sirius stone. Um, it's an aquarium rock. It's really nice. I will definitely be using that for something else. All right. I might give this a rinse off with the hose, clean up this area, and see if we can start forming it onto the hand. Here's the tree all washed up. Um, this big cut point here, I remember cutting off a huge bulbous root um, quite a while ago. Not that long ago, maybe six months ago. Um, and it's sealed off completely. Um, and the idea was to put that surface against a rock and grow roots out from the cut point, which it's done. Um, not many, but some. The idea here is to see what works. Oh. Yeah, maybe this. Oh, that's kind of cool. After much manipulation, I think I think that is the position of the tree that I like. I kind of like this back aerial root coming out of the pot and then coming back around and in. It's kind of sick. Um, I don't know if this is enough um, roots going down into the soil for the tree to survive, but maybe. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm just going to use some um, super glue and I'm going to ever so slightly bend some of these roots down and glue them to the hand so the tree is more secure to the pot and this super glue doesn't hurt the tree at all. People use um, super glue in aquascapes, in aquariums, with live fish and plants and all sorts of things. So once it cures, it's fine. So I'm just gonna put some here at the back. You gotta hold it down for about 10 seconds, 15 seconds for it to cure. Glue's root to finger. Okay, a little bit of fly screen to cover the drainage holes so the bonsai soil doesn't go out the bottom. One. Two, and I better start filling this in so these roots don't dry out. As a final step to this planting um, and creation, which I'm quite enjoying at this time, <laughs> I'm going to be mossing it up rather vigorously, only because um, I really want to encourage uh, the tree to survive and also um, aerial root growth. Here is my box of moss. And I want to use a variety here. I'm not going to be shy about it either. I'm going to be using a lot of moss. Some different variants of it. I don't mind also getting a bit of this wet sphagnum moss. Just a little bit and putting it into cracks and crevices where I would like more roots to grow. Just the base of the tree. I really want to encourage aerial roots to grow out from the base. And then we can start the terrestrial moss. 
application. So let's start, even though this is going to cover off a couple of the root, the um, existing roots, I really want it to be safe and protected for now. And that wet um, sphagnum moss is going to give a nice level of moisture to this terrestrial moss. Put this All right, now for the bottom, the, I think for down here, I'm gonna use it, some of this fine fern moss and just cover the whole thing. Terrestrial moss really helps to hold in the moisture and it will help those aerial roots that are coming down into the soil flourish. And what we can do is just rip it up into pieces. It doesn't affect the moss at all. And you can kind of build it up like a puzzle. It's quite satisfying actually. After the moss coverings, I got the hand out on the benches, left it for a couple of days. I would have put it in the greenhouse normally, but it was raining, so I left it out here. The moss greened up a little bit and now I've got a full turnaround. I was really pleased with the final product of the hand and I think it's going to do quite well. I'm looking forward to watching the aerial roots thicken up and the tree growing and looking a little bit more natural in this stance. The leaves will tilt towards the sun and things like that. The whole process was very experimental, but really fun. I would definitely do it again. The only thing I would change, I think, is probably the material I used for the hand itself. Next time, instead of using grout cement, I think I'll just use regular concrete or regular cement mixture and thin it down. As you can see, the final product looks good. It's a little bit crazy, but that's what I love about it. Thanks for watching. See you next time on PLB Green. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button.